Good morning. Good to see you. And for some of you, good afternoon. We're reaching out to you from the University of Colorado in Boulder, Colorado. Today's discussion is about engineering management. My name is Dan Moorer. I'm accompanied by Catherine Toby. Uh, before we begin, I would draw your attention to the Zoom images that are on your screen right now if you're participating. You may have one large and one small uh, image on your screen. There may be some instructions for you in the chat area. Uh, there is a, a line, a vertical line on your screen uh, inside Zoom that allows you to drag the images left and or drag the screen left and right, enlarging or decreasing the size of the various images. You should see a picture of me on one side and the slide behind me on the other side. But those of you who are online with us now, thank you for being here. We would ask you that for at least the initial part of this presentation that you place your systems on mute. And uh, later in the presentation, we'll have an opportunity for Q&A. If you do have questions uh, during uh, the presentation, please feel free to uh, put those into the chat area. Our graduate advisor, Kendra Tebow, will record those and, and my associate, uh, Professor Toby, and I will have the chance to answer those a little bit later. So today is a beautiful day in Boulder, Colorado. That picture that you see on the screen is exactly the kind of morning that we have here this morning. That's looking across the campus up towards the foothills. Those, uh, uh, the American flag there is highlighted against an area that we call the Flatirons. And those of you who are uh, local to this area know that. That's Green Mountain and Bear Mountain. My wife and I just the other day were out hiking, which is a very common activity in this part of the country, uh, right about the center of those foothills, and we came across a quite large black bear. Uh, must, uh, he must have been six feet tall or greater uh, standing up. This is kind of an interface between Mother Nature and humanity here in this area. So, beautiful part of the country. We're happy to welcome you, whether you're participating here in Boulder or from across the nation or around the world. And indeed, we do have students that join us from all around the world. And so, welcome. Happy to see you here today. The title of our slide says Engineering Management. And that is indeed the vehicle uh, for the education that we're talking about today. But I would propose to you that the purpose of this presentation and the discussion that we're going to have a bit later is more than that. Engineering management is simply the vehicle. I would propose to you that, that what we're really talking about is your future and the direction you might like to go with your life. Our focus today is on leadership. We'll spend some time talking about that a little bit later. But first, we want to give you an introduction to the engineering management program. Why? Because you probably, and I'll make a little bit of a reach here, probably are feeling the same way that I felt when I considered graduate school. Um, I've, uh, my uh, life has taken many different turns that has led to this point. I'm currently a faculty member here in the College of Engineering and Applied Sciences. And I have the joy of helping to oversee the engineering management program as its director. I would uh, uh, tell you a little bit about my background. I, a long time ago, and uh, as the saying goes, a galaxy far away, in 1978, I graduated from the military academy at West Point and served a career in the military. Uh, after that, I made the transition into industry via a doctorate here at uh, the University of Colorado at Boulder uh, in the areas of aerospace engineering and space physics. Along the way in the military, I picked up a couple of master's degrees, one in national policy, national space policy and space operations at the Army's Command and General Staff College, and also a master's degree in systems engineering for space 
application at the Florida Institute of Technology. Uh, I have worked in uh, small business, I've worked in industry, and in the scientific world, and now in academia. And I love the job that I have. Those of us who are fortunate enough to work here teaching topics like leadership and ethics and entrepreneurship and quality and the like are very, very lucky and we're all excited about our jobs here. But this presentation is about you. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll move forward now with our agenda. This is how we plan to spend our next, uh, next hour. Uh, my introduction to the engineering management program will take about 20 minutes or so. Uh, Professor Toby and I will have the opportunity to focus on leadership and how it can help to advance your career. As I said, we'll take questions at any time, but the Q&A where we'll answer your, your questions will be at the end. The total time that you'll be spending with us this morning is about an hour, and I have to say it may be one of the most valuable hours uh, you've ever spent, at least in terms of professional career. This is a picture of one of our professors, um, Michael Reedy, Professor Michael Reedy, who oversees our commercialization special, specialty area, specifically product development, entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship, and courses such as that. Professor Reedy is one of our best instructors. So this begins our introduction to the engineering management program. We are part of the College of Engineering and Applied Science. Uh, this is our part of the campus here that's shown in the image. Our undergraduate and graduate programs in this college are rated in the top 10 across the nation. So we feel very proud to be part of this organization. What is engineering management and why would one consider this? Some of you may wonder whether pursuing a master's degree or a certificate and some of the many areas that I'll discuss in just a moment is really possible at this point in your life. Perhaps you're unsure whether the next step in education is appropriate for you, or you have a very busy life with uh, family and activities and bills to pay, if you will, and other things that are going on in your life. How would this fit in? Moreover, why engineering management? Why is this important? So a quick uh, statement to the last question I offered there why engineering management. It does fall, as you can see on the screen, in the middle between engineering or a technical background and business. And so what we do is we bridge that gap. Engineering management as a, as a, as a department has been, uh, for various universities, has been around for a very, very long time because it was recognized a long time ago that it is not enough for engineers or those with a technical background to just understand their technical education. It is also important for them to understand how they fit into the business or industry or government arena in which they may find themselves. And so we provide a bridge. Some people ask us, well, what's the difference between a master's in engineering that engineering management offers and a master's in business, pardon me, in business administration uh, at a business school? And here is uh, a short answer for you. First, our faculty are industry experienced and technology oriented. They bring with them decades of industry experience and in the classroom, about half the time is spent uh, from the textbook. The other half, just as important, is providing uh, their experience as to how the ideas and concepts presented in the textbook apply directly to the job you may be in at this time or to your immediate future and where, where your advancement may lie. So our faculty bring decades, all of them, decades of experience in business and industry and government. The courses are designed with a technical focus. We teach leadership, 
We teach many business and management topics, but each of them has examples from the technical side, the industry side of society. And that is another uh, discriminator or separator, masters in engineering from uh, masters in business administration. Your fellow students uh, come from that background, business, industry, military, and government. Uh, in addition, uh, Masters of Business Administration at universities across the nation require somewhere in the range of 15 to 20 courses in order to complete. And their focus is far broader than ours. Don't take me wrong, these are great degrees. And if one is drawn in that direction, certainly the MBA is for you. But for those who have a desire to learn more about how to transition, how to be a translator between the technical side of work that you may be doing and the business side, which is the orientation for your company. This uh, course of instruction that only requires 10 courses, uh, 30 credit hours, may be the path for you. Why do we believe that it's right for you? If you fall into one of those categories that I mentioned on the previous slide, uh, we're here, we exist in order to transition the next generation of engineering and technical persons into leadership roles. Specifically, we're designed to help you advance your career at this point in your life. If you're working in a technical environment or in science or engineering, then that's why we exist. We exist to prepare you to take on management and leadership roles in your company or in your next assignment. That's why we're here. And our alumni, as I'll speak to later, say that it, their, their engineering management degree, to be honest, has proven to be more valuable to them than their technical degree. Certainly, they could not have secured their positions that they hold now without the technical degree, but the skills they're using now are enhanced by their work in the engineering management program. Our program, pardon me, offers three different paths, if you will. I'll speak first to the Master of Engineering and Engineering Management. This is, uh, this program uh, requires 30 credit hours or 10 courses, as I mentioned on a previous slide. It has five core courses and five electives. What does that mean? That means that you have the opportunity to specialize in areas that are of interest to you. In terms of our core courses, I would point some things out, and I'll start with the fifth bullet, the fifth course mentioned there, engineering communication. From our, the, the persons who attend our, who advise our college, local and regional uh, business and industry leaders, and in literature from across business uh, publications across the nation, we hear again and again and again that leaders are looking for junior leaders Leaders of companies, CEOs are looking for junior leaders and mid-level leaders who can communicate. And for that reason, we offer a core course in engineering communication with a focus on both written and verbal communication, just as we're advised uh, from the sources that I mentioned a moment ago. Indeed, the next bullet up that speaks to project management is systems engineering. Statistically speaking, project managers and systems engineers spend 90%, 90% of their time communicating, either sending or receiving. And that is an incredible statistic. It just highlights the importance of communication. Uh, in order to understand and communicate effectively, we, we speak to the topic of leading oneself in our core courses. The idea that in order to communicate effectively, we need to know what is going on inside of ourselves. Who are we as leaders? 
what style do we have as a leader? And so both of those, all three of those courses go together. In a business environment, the next bullet up, finance and accounting. Uh, one needs to know how to operate in a business environment in order to be effective, to know how your skills translate into the mission of the company that you're a part of. And so finance and accounting is there. One might think, oh my gosh, finance and accounting, how boring is that going to be? Actually, that course gets some of the highest course ratings from our students. And I think you'd be surprised at the joy in that. All of that is led by a course called Introduction to Engineering Management, which gives one an overview of the entire program. In addition to those core courses, in addition to those core courses, one moment. We offer a variety of electives, five courses in electives, ranging from uh, other leadership courses to product development that I mentioned before, even business law. I don't know how many of you have been in the room when uh, surrounded by your contemporaries, engineers and systems engineers and project managers, and an attorney walks into the room uh, for, in a, for a discussion on some event, and the entire room goes quiet. And why is that? It's because the others in the room may not have a depth of understanding in business law as it applies to engineers. So we offer that course starting this term, or actually next term, to give one a foundation of knowledge as to how law applies to those who work in a technical arena. And so we're very excited about that. And we offer a depth of courses in leadership uh, and quality and other forms of engineering. Also the Six Sigma certification is part of our course offerings. We also offer uh, graduate certificates. And we offer them in various areas. These are a few in the leadership and management area, in project management, in quality systems, as I mentioned before, and Six Sigma. And we offer a variety of others. This is just a selection of those certificates that we offer. They normally require three to four courses uh, to complete the certificate. And then that allows one to specialize in a particular area without going through the entire degree. I would note that it is not necessary for one to take, go after the entire master's degree in order to take a certificate. And so one may do both or one may do either. Those are two separate possibilities for you. Finally, and this is really amazing, we offer a dual degree with several of the departments in our college. That is, one can earn a technical degree, say in aerospace or mechanical engineering, and at the same time earn a master's degree in engineering management and do both in less time. And that's kind of cool. And we offer dual degrees in these four, with these four departments, aerospace, computer science, electrical, double E, electrical engineering and uh, mechanical engineering. And that's an amazing opportunity. If you have questions about that possibility for your future, we'd be happy to answer that at the Q&A. So how would this program meet your needs? Well, how, first of all, how does it fit into a busy lifestyle? Today's world seems to fill up our lives like uh, nothing our parents experienced. So we offer three different ways for you to participate in these classes. The first, for those of you who are local, you can participate in the classroom. And uh, so that's a possibility. For those of you who are remote, as you all are right now participating in this web webinar, we offer the opportunity to partic participate in the class in exactly the same way that you're watching it right now. You're live in the class, and you have your instructors there uh, looking you in the eye, 
uh, communicating with you and you're part of the class um, uh, there live during the class period. And finally, for those who are on work travel or those who are unable to make the class time because of other conflicts or because of time zone differences, then you have the opportunity to watch the class videos. We video record every class that we teach uh, in the graduate program and we offer that to you as another possibility for participating. We offer our classes once a week, two and a half hours, which gives you the rest of the week to complete your full-time job, your time with your family, your personal time, and so on, and then work on your studies at your convenience, and then participate in the class either by in-class attendance or through Zoom or by watching the class video. It's incredibly flexible and so that it fits into your both, both your professional and your personal life. Our course content, and we're very proud of this, is both broad and deep. In the leadership area, for example, which Kathy and I will discuss with you in a few minutes, we offer five courses. We offer a course in leading oneself. We offer a course in leading others. We offer a course in leading organizations starting next semester. We offer a course in communication, which is essential to the effective leader. And we offer a course in ethics, which is also one of the focus areas for our local and regional business leaders. They want their younger leaders to understand ethical principles. Um, and so we offer a course in that area also. We offer a balance of required and elective courses, five and five, if you're pursuing the degree. And finally, we think for, you to, for meeting your needs that the best combination of background for a faculty is one with both knowledge in their specific specialty area and also uh, their experience in industry. That balance is powerful, and we have our alumni tell us that that works excellently for them. This is a quote from one of our recent graduates. I'll let you glance at that quickly. Oh, so Catherine, the student you see here, graduated recently and as a project manager working here on campus. And I would say, what's in this for you? So a quick summary. Advancing your career, without a doubt. Putting these skills to use makes you a better follower and potentially, should you decide to pursue this path, makes you a better manager and leader if, that, if you believe that that is in your future. And trust me when I say, if you feel that for some reason that's not for you, that you may not have the skills necessary to be a manager and leader. Trust me when I say, and Kathy would, would agree with this, Kathy teaches leadership with me also, that managers and leaders are made, not born. And so that may be in your future also. Potentially increasing your salary, those in leadership roles may receive a salary uh, greater than that of their contemporaries. Um, uh, mastering, the business fundamentals and other skills, including communication, leadership, and the like, uh, makes one a better follower and a better leader, better participant on the teams that you're a part of in your current job. Practical experience from our instructors that you can put to use. This is, I'm not saying this. This is what our, our alumni tell us that can be put to use immediately in your current role and the opportunity to expand your network, meeting new people from diverse, diverse backgrounds. Here are some of the companies uh, which our students are participating in. Lockheed Martin, Medtronic, a local medical device company, uh, other aerospace companies, uh, and other companies as you see there. This is a quote from another young lady who graduated from our program recently, Irene Dieppe, if you care to take a look at that.
So that is it for our discussion of the engineering management program. And I hope that was brief enough but comprehensive enough to give you an idea of the vehicle that takes you perhaps towards your future. I would say again, though, that what is really important is what one learns here, the opportunity to expand one's knowledge, uh, in my opinion, uh, gives one a leg up, both professionally and perhaps even personally in life. It's uh, our alumni tell us amazing stories about their leadership opportunities having been through this program. So uh, Kathy and I uh, will provide a bit more in-depth introduction to Kathy here in just a moment, are going to be here on camera. Uh, we're gonna, I'm going to change my position here in the studio in just a moment. Um, and we will uh, provide a bit more of a focus on the leadership aspects of our program and why understanding leadership might be valuable for your future. Should you have questions on what I've just presented or on what Kathy and I are going to discuss for the next 15 minutes or so, uh, please send them in through the chat and uh, we'll take your questions in just a few minutes. So a uh, quick break as we switch to a different camera in a different part of the studio. Great. Okay, so here we are for the second part of this. I'm joined on my left here uh, by Kathy Toby. And Kathy, would you mind giving a bit of your sure. background? Absolutely. So I just recently required, uh, retired from Lockheed Martin Space. Uh, I have a 34-year career in aerospace. I have a chemical engineering degree, though, from University of Colorado in Boulder. I also have this degree that uh, Dan just spoke about. I have the uh, graduate degree in engineering management. And I pursued that degree after I started working, and I think that's really one of the most important attribute, attributes of this program is that you can uh, go right into your, um, your graduate degree just before you, know, um, you enter industry, or you can go to work for a while, maybe find something that interests you, has um, some uh, good... Uh, connection to the work that you want to do and that is what I did and quite frankly I worked probably seven years before I went back to school and got my master's degree. One of the things that um, we're finding especially for um, people that want to explore taking a graduate degree especially in leadership that is one of I would say the uh, prerequisites to getting into uh, more broad and deep uh, leadership positions in your company. Um, companies want to see that um, some of their high potential employees are self-selecting uh, to go back and get this graduate degree because it shows that they've got an understanding that they need to know more about the business of engineering mm -hmm. um, and then use that to become a better leader in their companies. So um, that's a little bit about my background. Excellent. And so, uh, and thank you for that. I have to say that um, uh, having Kathy join us on the faculty has been uh, an exceptional opportunity and exceptional experience thus far. Kathy and I currently teach the Leading Others course. We offer, as I mentioned, we offer five courses on leadership. Uh, I would add to that that followership is just as important as leadership but the skills that one learns in leadership classes translate directly into uh, followership and so it, it's the courses we teach uh, benefit one in both of those roles and I suppose indeed even as a leader we're also a follower for the people we're working for so very fortunate that Kathy has joined our faculty uh, with 34 years experience at uh, Lockheed Martin 
and held one of the highest positions in one of the largest companies in the world. And so her experience is just exceptional. She'll be teaching the Leading Organizations course next term. So let's talk about leadership just a minute. We'll offer some ideas about why we think it's important um, and, why, and how it may benefit you in your uh, career. And Kathy, if it's okay, I'll go ahead and kick yeah, this off. Do. But please jump in. <clears throat> so we believe here that it is at its most fundamental level that leadership uh, includes the ability to speak with others. Notice I didn't see, say speak to others. I said speak with others in such a manner and in such a tone of voice as to, so as to inspire in them a desire to excel. And so for all of you, I'm sure, all of the, those of you who are watching, you may have experienced that in your life from a parent or from a relative or from a coach or teacher or someone in your life who has, who has been inspiring for you. What was it about their words and their tone of voice, their choice of words, that caused you to think, wow, I can do better. I can be bigger than what I am. The team that I'm a part of can, be, can accomplish things that are larger than we are as a team. And so those ideas form just the smallest part of this thing called leadership. It is very broad and it's very deep. It's, you know, looking at leadership, buying a leadership book from your local bookstore is similar to uh, the old story about the blind men and the elephant. You know, and the blind men are trying to decide or to say, to tell, what does this elephant look like? And one poor gentleman grabs the elephant by the tail and says, this elephant is like a rope. And the other one grabs a leg and says, no, it's, it's round like a cylinder. And another one grabs the trunk and says, it's something else. Leadership is an incredibly broad topic. It is for that reason that we have established five courses. Um, and we're very proud, proud of it. It's only one of the focus areas for our, for our program, but we think it's very important. Um, and so leadership is a very broad topic. And I would, I would begin to say, and, and Kathy, please help me here, that if one intends at some point to, to to be in charge of others, whether it is, um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be very broad in my description here, a youth soccer team, a church group, uh, a family, uh, a work group at work, these principles apply. They're, they're applied in different ways, but the principles, in my opinion, the principles are the same, respect for others, speaking to others in a way that inspires them, helping them to discover the strength within themselves. It applies across the, across the board. Would you, would you agree with that? I, I would, and, and I would also suggest there's a, another motivation here. Um, when you look at the workforce and the demographics of the workforce today, um, there is a large group um, that is beginning to think about retirement or has already retired. And some of my colleagues in um, other industries and uh, other uh, corporations, we, we've been talking about the issue that we now need to call up and we're now expecting that high potential employees um, are ready to take on leadership positions long before they have had 10 years or so of experience sort of observing and uh, mm -hmm. taking on smaller sort of management roles. One of the things that's different between management and leadership is that you can be a manager, you can understand the skills 
to put together um, a project and execute a project and do it with a management set of skills. A leadership set of skills is different. And the expectations are that um, these potential employees are going to be leaders or the next generation of leaders in these companies. And what is interesting about these courses is it shows your company, it shows your industry um, that you are being proactive, that you are going to get ready, you're going to begin to understand what it takes to be a leader long before you may be asked to start that role. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about leadership, we, we talk about, well, let's, let's talk about what does that mean? Are you ready to now take on a role where you have to take care of your team? You have to be able to communicate with them. You have to be transparent. You now become an organizational ambassador. You are not just an employee, but you are also a part of a bigger organization and your job is strategy and it's communication as well as delivering on results. And so um, we talk about all of the attributes of being a leader. However, um, those attributes are held very, very personally for every person. And so in, in class, we talk about um, how do you uniquely take some of these attributes and make them your own and make them the leader that you are going to be. So we don't have, a, I would say, a quantitative way of teaching leadership because it is going to be incredibly personal to you. We spend a lot of time making sure that we have conversations. And I'll, I'll give you an example. Uh, Dr. Moore and I, uh, he introduced this question the other day to a leadership class. You're a brand new leader. Can you be friends with your team? All right, what an interesting question. Should you be? Is there really an answer? What kind of team is it? What kind of leader are you? H how do you go about um, structuring a team of high performers, but maybe also your friends? Um, and it's really things like that that you need to know and you need to have your own personal opinions um, and, and traits to be able to, to handle that and, and grow. Great thoughts. Great thoughts. And in the classroom, just to expand on what, um, what Professor Toby said, uh, we um, teach leadership, uh, at least part of our classes in every class, we provide questions about what would you do if? Kathy covered one of them in speaking to, you know, when in dealing with our team, are we friends with our team or are we friendly with our team, which is an incredibly deep discussion. Uh, we look at other questions, such as the balance between the mission of the company and, uh, and the people that are part of your team. How do we balance those two? Uh, and that's, that question is very deep. We also speak to what if you're faced with someone you work for. We would normally call them a boss. But let's just say someone you work for who is your boss, who is not the most pleasant person to work with, who puts demands on you and your team that you feel are unreasonable, or worse than that, begins to approach the question of ethics and ethical behavior. What about that? How does one handle it? And how does one manage that situation without damaging one's team and without letting down the mission of the company and without destroying one's own career? That's a balancing act. We speak to office politics, how to survive as a leader. We speak to how to lead individuals and how to lead teams. Uh, we speak to in the leading organizations course. You may want to speak about that a bit and about what you're going to cover. But let me touch on leading oneself for a moment. I mentioned this in, um, in the previous segment. 
and let me touch on it again. We believe, uh, based on our own experience and those who advise us, uh, local and regional leadership, and from what we read in the current literature, and what we read about leaders throughout history, going all the way back thousands of years, that understanding oneself is critically important in order to understand others. Uh, first seek, in other words, first seek to understand oneself, what's going on in here, before we attempt to even understand another person or especially to lead them. And so this course, Leading Oneself, we have made it one of our core courses. We want you to understand where your strengths are, and you will discover that as part of the course. We want you to understand the effect of your words on others is covered both in our Leading Oneself course and in our communication course. The matching of your nonverbal communication with the words that come out of one's mouth are also covered in our communication course. The leading oneself helps you to discover your leadership style. I think, I think Kathy would agree that leaders come in all shapes and sizes uh, in all different styles and one style works for one person would not work for another. What's important is for each of us to understand who we are and what is our style. Not what's in fashion, but what's, what, is, what is your style? What works well for you? And so we also attempt, not attempt, but we help you to discover who you are as a leader in the Leading Oneself course. Kathy, do you want to spend a minute talking about leading or the next step above leading others, that is leading organizations? So leading organizations is a little aspirational, I will say. Um, this is a point in your career where think of it as you are now leading leaders, right? And, and hopefully, um, if, if you want uh, to aspire to be a leader, you want to get to a point now where you are um, leading an organization, whether it be a profit and loss area or a functional organization. But the idea is now, how do you get work done through others? And it is different than leading of small, let's say, uh, uh, product team for the very first time. We talk about uh, ideas like emotional intelligence and having um, the ability to be self-aware of how you're coming across to your team and self-regulation to be able to change things if you're not getting through to these incredibly important leaders that are now communicating to the rest of the organization. Another part of the, uh, of the course is about uh, delivering on commitments. So now you are not responsible for maybe one or two streams of work, but you're responsible for large organizations delivering very complicated technical products or services. Um, this idea of accountability, and I think the military does it quite well, this extreme accountability, how you begin to train yourself to understand you are accountable for everything that is going on, whether it's internal or external mm -hmm. to your team. Um, and that takes, that takes a little bit of introspection, it takes a lot of examples and it takes a lot of discussion. And then finally, your job in leading organizations is about setting strategy. What is it like to set strategy? What does the strategy look like? How do you communicate it? How do you execute it? And then how do you create value for the organization that put you in charge of this very important area? So it's sort of the next step in leadership. Um, Anyone can aspire to want to lead an organization. And in taking it in graduate school, uh, the hope is not only will it ex excite you and want you to, to keep advancing in your career, but it's going to help you understand the people that are in those roles right now, why they're doing what they're doing. It might give you a different perspective of you know, why are they making these decisions? Why are they telling us to do these kinds of things? And quite frankly, you can probably have some very good discussions with them 
about their techniques and their tools. Right, right. So this course comes online next? Next spring. Next spring, this coming spring. And uh, very excited about it. It's the next step after leading oneself and leading others. Leading organizations is a natural progression. And so this is, this is going to be an amazing course. Uh, to be honest, I may sign up for it myself. Um, I, I will, I'll, I'll sit and try to be quiet. So this has been, we have about uh, 14, 15 minutes remaining before the session is done. We want to give you all an opportunity to ask your questions. Um, I know we have some that have come in already. And Kendra, our graduate advisor, is going to be feeding those to us. And Kathy and I will, will be here and attempt to answer them as best we can. We have members of our staff in the room. Uh, Lou Rutherford, who runs our program, uh, she is here uh, in the room with us. Uh, Kendra Thibault, whose name I mentioned just a moment ago, is our graduate advisor and has advised many students like yourselves who are not, you know, not sure if this is the right thing for you, and she has uh, all the answers. And Amy Viverito, who is our marketing manager and who set up this, uh, this video for webinar for you this morning. One thing I'd close with before we get to Q&A is that this focus on leadership is one of five different specialty areas in our program, each of them as broad and as exciting as, and as in-depth as what uh, we're, we, we have discussed in, in leadership. So uh, each time we hold one of these seminars, we focus on a special area. Last time we met several months ago, we, we talked about quality, the quality area led by uh, Professor Wendy Bailey, whose image is on the screen right now teaches our quality course, that is providing to the customer exactly what they've requested. Uh, that's a very brief definition. She offers the Six Sigma certification in that area. She runs that specialty area. And so, uh, and so this is just one of the, of the five areas. So Kendra, if your microphone is on, if the studio has turned your microphone on, why don't you, uh, with the time we have remaining, why don't we answer some of our, of our questions? So there actually was a question regarding Six Sigma. Okay. I know it's not your area. Okay. Since you mentioned it. Um, so the presenter mentioned education in Six Sigma. I don't see a specific course in Six Sigma. So do you want to expand on that? I can expand on it a bit, but, uh, and if my answer since this is not my specialty area, if my answer is not adequate, please provide your email address to Kendra, and I'll put Kendra's information uh, up on the screen. And by the way, Amy, can you please go up and advance the, the slide so it shows Kendra's contact information? And if I don't answer it adequately, plus there is a description, so somewhat of a description on the website. Six Sigma is actually a collection of courses uh, that lead to the Six Sigma certification. So you won't see a specific course on Six Sigma. It is simply the title of the area and the certification that comes from taking a sequence of courses. Our Six Sigma uh, sequence is, uh, meets the requirements for Six Sigma, and we have people graduating every semester with that certification. Uh, it is based on, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but it is based on the idea or the foundation of quality. That is providing to the customer, statistically speaking, exactly what they have requested for their application. Is that generally? Right. It, it's, um, it's the study of um, everything from quality control to, to uh, improving processes um, such that um, you have a basis in probability and statistics um, that you use to confirm that you have a compliant product. Mm -hmm. Good, thank you. Thanks for expanding on that. 
Kendra, what do you have next? So there's another question. Um, out in the workforce, there are employed engineers without the academic background in engineering. Undoubtedly, there will be non-engineers who apply to your graduate program. How do you or can you accommodate this type of applicant? Okay, so I'm going to read back that question, Kendra, and make sure that I understand it. Is this program only for engineers or might we have others from the science field or someone outside of science and engineering? Okay, let's address that. Our program historically and engineering management programs historically across the nation have focused on providing a middle ground for scientists and engineers or those working in a technical environment who may not be scientists or engineers to gather information, gather knowledge that allows them to operate more effectively with the company that, that employs them. Because the company's focus is on revenue, winning business, uh, profit that gives it money to expand its operations and so on in, in the most general sense. And so uh, is it, here's the question for you. Number one, is it important for employees to have that kind of knowledge, whether or not they exist in science or engineering? My feeling is yes. My feeling is that it makes one a better employee, whether one is in finance, administration, other forms of logistics or administration, or operations, as well as science and engineering. It is for that reason that we have decided to open our doors to others outside the area of science and engineering. And there is a course that we have set aside, we call it Engineering Management 5000, that gives one a background, okay, an intro, an appreciation, and a fundamental understanding of engineering so that then one can proceed through the other courses, understanding how things fit. So we don't want to drop someone in, not having at least some background uh, in science and engineering. I would not worry, if I were you, uh, if you don't have a background in science and engineering, that that course, Engineering Management 5000, is gonna, it's, go, it's, not, it's going to be too difficult for you. We have many in our program who have graduated who are not specifically in that technical background. So we have opened our doors and we have many in our program, perhaps five to 10% of our student population working towards a degree who do not specifically have that undergraduate degree in science and engineering uh, or that are not necessarily working directly uh, in a technical field. Any, any thoughts? Um, however, um, it will be most meaningful if you are working in a technical area in a company. Mm -hmm. So um, if you are a physicist or math uh, graduate or chemist, or maybe even in uh, a, a different art, art and science um, uh, program, uh, the, the content and the programming is really structured around working in a technical environment. Yes. So, you know, it would, I guess maybe it's a different perspective. Um, or maybe you want to work in a technical environment. But, but that ought to be one of the, the uh, sort of uh, criteria that you use to get this degree. Good, good caveat. Thank you. Thank you. So I hope that that answered your question. If it did not, send a, send a clarification to Kendra through the chat area and we'll address it again in more detail. Next question, please, Kendra. Um, so there was one earlier uh, asking about whether there are mentors for like startups, startup ideas. Ah, well, mentors for startups and startup ideas. This is a good question because we live, Boulder, University of Colorado at Boulder is situated in one of the hotbeds for entrepreneurs and startups. And so inevitably, we are involved in those activities. The gentleman whose image I showed before in my slide presentation, Professor Michael Reedy, uh, is heavily 
involved in that area, specifically with an emphasis on entrepreneurship, but he attends all of or many of the of the meetup activities um, uh, that surround the idea of entrepreneurship and startups. At the present time, we do not offer any uh, classes specifically in how to exercise a startup, but there's a caveat to that, and Kathy, you may want to comment on this. It is that the principles that we teach from leadership to commercialization or entrepreneurship, product development, quality, statistics, the principles that we teach, project management, uh, all apply across, I think you'd agree, across the range from incredibly large organizations from which uh, Kathy comes to medium-sized industry, which I come from, small business, that where I've started two companies in small business, and so on. The principles apply. And so whatever one learns here in terms of organizing and, and such with project management, principles of leadership and the like, all apply, make one a better participant and leader in those organizations. Please. I, I agree. Um, as far as the question about mentors, um, I think you could consider your um, instructors as mentors. Um, within the industries, we have uh, people that are very, very interested in um, helping our students in whatever way they might need. So um, again, as Professor Moore said, there is not a very specific class in startups. All of the elements of being able to start up a company exist within this uh, curriculum. The mentors, I would add that the mentors, uh, okay, here's the deal. There are more mentors in this area than you can shake a stick at. That's, that's, that's the bottom line, okay? And they exist in uh, the various startup organizations that are in this area. Professor um, Reedy, Michael Reedy, who I mentioned to you, could point you in the right direction for someone who could actually mentor you in the process of establishing a startup. And then, of course, Professor Reedy offers courses in product development and entrepreneurship and other things that would be part of, probably be part of that startup. Please, Kendra. Um, there weren't any other questions in the chat. Um, is there anything else we're forgetting? <laughs> OK. Do we have other questions from previous? OK. Well, I think we are about at the end of our presentation, so this, time has, this timing has worked perfectly. I want to thank uh, all of our members of our staff in the studio, Lou and Kendra, who's, Kendra, whose information is on, the, on your screen, Amy, who, who set this up, um, uh, my accomplice, Professor Toby, and, uh, and those uh, John Asbell in our studio, who's running the cameras and such for all of their help and bringing this message to you. I would close by saying that for all of us as faculty and staff who work in this, in this position, uh, our job as educators is to assist you in taking the next step in your educational future and also preparing you for what may, what adventures may await you in your professional life. And so should you have questions, Kathy and I would be happy to, to answer those questions with our uh, experience. And Kendra would be your point of contact in terms of sending, at least initially, in terms of sending those uh, questions to us to help you make a decision as to where you want to go and who do you want to be in the future? Uh, Kendra's phone number is on the screen and her uh, general email address for our program. It's been our pleasure to be with you here this morning. It was good to see you. Thank you so much. Have a good day and best of luck to you and your future.